Hello everyone, Bloody Sky here with some tips and tricks to help you get through the robotics minigame. Whether you're just now starting out or you're stuck on Team NT, hopefully these tips will get you all the way through the finals. I've got this. First off, let's start off with some tips that I don't remember reading in the tutorial. While in the minigame itself, if you press triangle, well, triangle on the PlayStation, it will give your robot a little speed boost. It will help you speed across the screen and hopefully get some much needed blocks. This is on your default robot, which has the speed frame. If you've changed your robot up, it might not have this. I'm not too sure. So if it doesn't have the speed boost, try switching back to the speed frame. Secondly, if you look at the bottom center of the screen, you can see that you can hold three blocks. You can hold up to three different tiles of blocks. So you can put down three blocks in a row. This comes in handy if you are currently already have a block that you're trying to place and one spawns right next to you. Just go ahead and get it. It'll make your life that much easier in the long run. I have found that the main trick to this mini game is to simply just rush to the enemy base. Do not worry about attacking other robots. Do not worry about leaving gaps like the tutorial says try not to leave gaps. Don't worry about that. Just try to place blocks to quickly get to the enemy's red base. As soon as you put even one block, one blue block, in the enemy's base, you will instantly win the game. Using this method, I was able to beat the first couple battles in 50 some odd seconds. Now, I will give you a little note here that sometimes, even using this method, the luck will just be against you. The game will spawn all the blocks where the enemies are already at. You have no hope to getting them. It's just, sometimes that will happen. If that happens, just shrug it off and play the match again, and you'll probably end up beating it in 50 seconds. Using this method of just going straight for the enemy base is enough to blow through about half of the Robotics Club story. I did so without really upgrading my bots at all. Now, about halfway through, you will come across a team called Team NT, and the practice mode equivalent is called Close Call. Here is where the difficulty spikes, and you will need to finally modify your robots and probably even change them. Most of the people clicking on this video are probably because they are stuck at Team NT, and I don't blame them. I tried going in with my pretty much unmodified robots, and well, it didn't go so well. Okay, let's go <laughs> Got gangbanged. Got gangbanged in a corner. Kill him! <laughs> what the heck's going on? Why is my AI not doing anything? Now, what I did is I went in and changed my defensive circular robot to another balanced type robot. If you go into customize and go into parts rearrangement, you can press L1 and R1 to switch robots. Take away the defensive circular one and put it to balanced and give both balanced robots guns, ranged weapons. I personally preferred having one the shotgun, which I believe was called the spider gun, and giving the other one the machine gun, which I believe was called the MG Firefly. I did try the sniper rifle at first, and while it was nice because it was a one-shot kill on most of the AI robots, it's just the AI did not seem to time its shots very well, so I ended up switching to the machine gun instead of the sniper. The cannon is okay because it does splash damage, so it can damage multiple enemy robots at once, but I felt the damage wasn't good enough. So that's why I stuck with one shotgun and one machine gun. I did think about switching to two machine guns, but I ended up just sticking with one shotgun, one machine gun, and that actually took me all the way through the finals. When you are building the balanced frames, make sure you build the ones that say it prioritizes the AI to block and attack enemies. This is what you want so you don't have to make a module out of it. Because you want your two modules to be ranged attack increase and increased ammo. For your bot, keep the speed frame and as for your module, either rotation speed or movement speed. I was using rotation speed at first, but I switched to movement speed later on and I found that I liked movement speed a lot more. But pick whichever one feels more helpful to you. 
use the speed motor of course, don't use the balanced motor. And as for your weapon, you can make it pretty much anything. I went with the shield for extra defense, or you could just opt for no weapon at all and have those extra points that takes up your battery used for something else. This is helpful for if you don't want to run out and grab the materials to make a better battery. Speaking of the materials, you can get some from, of course, laying around town, but if you don't want to search around town forever, there are two places you can get them. One, you can get, there's a kid in school who sells them, he's behind the gymnasium, but he mostly sells the materials to make the weaker parts, the earlier parts, so in order for to beat this TNT battle, you're probably going to have to go to the general goods cart, that's in the big park at the very top right hand corner of the map, it's where the skater kids hang out if you've made it that far. However, there's also some materials that are exclusive to the Robotics Club minigames themselves. So if you can't find what you need, look at the practice battles. You can press square and it'll tell you what you get from this practice battle, what loot you get. Press square on the practice battles, see if what you need is in any of those practice battles. You'll probably have to do a couple practice battles to get the materials you need there as well. Also, I do want to note that it will show you some parts that you simply just cannot make yet. You simply cannot get the materials from yet in any of the practice battles or even the battle that's coming up. It's kind of lame, but that is what it is. So if you're getting really frustrated because you see a part that you really want to make, but you don't know how to get the SP1 data or whatever the hell it is, chances are you're probably not that far in the battles yet to get that reward. Now, as a quick recap, I will run through everything that I had equipped on my bots when I finally beat Team NT. On the robot you control, Deuce, I believe is his name. The speed frame, the MB-1000E. I had the battery, the LKR-60. I had the speed motor S. I personally had the turtle shield, but you could put anything there. And I personally had the enhanced rotation speed level 2. Again, if I was to go back and replay it now, I probably would put enhanced movement speed, but that's just what I had at the time. My second robot, which I believe was named X, he had the balance frame of the SF-07. Make sure it says it's the one that prioritizes actions that attack and block enemies, which is the SF-07. The battery, LKR-60. The balance motor, S. The spider shot, G slash M3 shotgun. And then for the modules, it was the enhanced range attack level 2 and increased ammo level 2. For the third robot, which I think is named Mechama? Mech? Mech? Machina? I don't know. It's basically the same exact thing. The SF XF07 body, the one that prioritizes attack and block enemies. Easy for me to say. The battery, the LKR60. The balance motor S. I personally, when I finally beat it, I had the Eagle Sniper R MK2. But if I was to replay it again, I would pick the machine gun, personally. I put the machine gun after this battle, and I had a lot easier times from then on out. But if you want to try the sniper, be my guess, but I failed three times with the sniper before I finally passed it. So I wouldn't recommend it, but if you want to try the sniper, go for it. And then again, I have the other robot. Enhanced range attack level 2 and increased ammo level 2. If you need more info, I will post it either in the description or I might post a comment. I might post how you can get all this stuff, where you can get the materials, all that good stuff. So be sure you look down in the comments below. As for the strategy of the battle itself, well, it's pretty much the same as it always has been. Just rush to the enemy base as quick as you can. Hopefully, your two AI teammates will take out the opponents, and if you get Real lucky they'll take out the opponents enough to where they're hardly on the map. But that probably won't happen. You might have to do this a few times because it still is kind of luck based, this battle is. This battle is by far the hardest one I thought. Because uh, right after this battle, you get access to a good mod, which I'll talk about more here in a minute. For now, enjoy my winning moment of finally beating Team NT. Nice. There we go. Oof. Good. I'm gonna change them both to machine guns now because 
That sniper bot, even though it's nice that he's a one-shot kill, he's just, at least in that match, he was not firing well, I guess you'd say. <laughs> he was not you guys. timing his shots well. This will be a good time to remind you if you're finding this video helpful, I would really appreciate a like. And if you're feeling super generous, a subscribe is always good too. Also, feel free to hop over to Twitch and give me a follow if you ever want to watch or chat with me live. Now, in the very next match against SDRD International, you will get what's called CF2 data. And the great thing about CF2 data is it allows you to make a module called the Mobile Attack Device. This allows your AI robots to shoot while moving, so now they no longer have to stop in order to shoot their ranged weapons. This is a great mod, but you need 20 to make just one of the mod, so you'll probably have to play that match three to four times in order to get all the CF2 data you need to make it twice. What's also great about that match though, is it'll also get you the Assault Application Report, which allows you to make the better balance frame XF13, which has three module slots. So you can put your ranged attack, ammo, and your new mobile attack device mods all in one robot. So doing the three to four battles you need to get the CF2 data, you will probably get enough assault application reports to build the XF13 frames as well. The very next battle after that, against SAL Sotenbore, you will get the SP1 data you need to make the stealth chip. Put the stealth chip on the robot that you are controlling and sit back and relax as you can build blocks all the way to their base while the computer basically ignores you. It's great. Once you get all that done, the stealth chip, the two AI robots with the frame with three modules with the mobile attack devices, you're pretty much good to go after that. I didn't upgrade anything else and I was able to complete the rest of the Robotics Club matches with ease. However, if you do find yourself running into problems, then I would suggest maybe upgrading your AI robots as weapons, make them do more damage, maybe update the frame of your robot so you'll move around the board quicker. But as I mentioned, once you get the stealth chip, it'll probably be easy from there. I hope you found these tips and tricks useful. If you're still struggling with the Robotics Club and you need some additional help, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to help you best I can. I got this one. Out of my way, teammate. You're not really helping me here. Boom, win. Didn't even have to upgrade anymore.